and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in this episode we'll be talking about creating healthy buildings through data analytics. I'm joined today by Tyson Souter, a Global Business Development Manager for Digitalization at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Tyson, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Before we start, what is a healthy building? Yeah, so it's a, it's a term that is becoming really popular in the industry right now. So we had smart buildings, intelligent buildings, healthy buildings. I, I think they all really come together, but it's about saying we're focusing on a sustainable building. We're also focusing on a building that's efficient, but making it so it's comfortable and and uh, available and, 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 and optimized for the tenant. How can they be part of the building? How can they feel comfortable? How can they get good air quality, good light levels, have good movement around the building? This is all stuff that we need to take into account and it doesn't need to be a trade-off as well between a healthy building and a, and a smart building or an efficient building. Yeah, because this is something that as an industry we've learned more about uh, over time. We used to, as you say, focus just on energy efficiency, but the impact of a building and the surroundings on the user's health and their productivity and many other aspects of their day-to-day -day lives is quite profound. Exactly, and you know, one percent of the building cost is utility, ten percent is rent, and ninety percent, or not eighty-nine percent. It's good maths. I like it. Thank you. Is uh is around the people. Yeah. So how can we say, um, let's focus on the people. And we can do that without having to ignore the rest as well. Yeah, because we want to continue to improve the, the buildings and their sustainability approach and everything like this. So we yeah. don't have to give up on that to create a healthy building. Exactly. So how do we achieve this, this healthy building using data analytics? So it's about saying, let's not ignore the space. Let's, let's connect all the traditional systems and, and, and the tenant complaint systems, but engage with the user, the employee, the tenant, whoever it is. How can they provide feedback and how can we make sure that we're providing the right space for them? So when you build a, a meeting room or an office layout, it's not just a person per square meter, it's, it's movement in that space. How can we make sure we're providing enough oxygen? Make sure that the light levels are appropriate for the working conditions. So not just sizing up an equipment to capacity across the floor, but sizing up to make sure we provide good quality air to certain rooms. There's many studies out there that talk about you know, the lack of air and, and the, the drop in performance mm -hmm. or productivity. If we, can, if we could hard measure that productivity loss and give it back to an employer, this would be what they spend their money on in every building. And it's starting to get to the point where the, the tenant or the, the employee is becoming educated enough to realize, I spend all my time in this building. I deserve a healthy and, 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 and happy environment to work in. Absolutely. So to deliver this, to control the light uh, levels, to control the, the CO2 and the oxygen levels in a room, to control the, the comfort and the temperature, we have our building automation systems and our lighting control systems. What does data analytics add to these systems in a traditional sense to really enable them to achieve this goal? Yeah, so once you in, in, install all these systems, it's not going to magically work. No. So it's about saying, we've got our we've got the tenant that we need to concentrate on, but We've got all these systems that are logging all these important data. How can we take what they're doing and connect it up to this to make sure it matches? So give them access to either some sort of voting system for temperature or lights or some way that they can track how they feel as an individual. And then that needs to dictate and drive change within the system. And you can do so at a very healthy balance between energy optimization and efficiency because we all have to be aware of that. But also making sure we're doing the right thing by them. So it's the connection between the, the physical asset and their working environment and make it easy so they can feel like they can engage with the systems in a way. So we facilitate that feedback, that, mm -hmm. that uh, information that coming directly from the user and, and then compare to what was happening at the time when we received complaints, exactly. what was happening at the time when we received positive feedback and try and replicate that as much as possible. It's very much looking for the patterns. Yeah. So once you start looking at complaints in certain areas, you can nearly start looking at, okay, these certain, these people are voting that they're too cold all the time. As a, as a company and as a building operator, maybe it's not worth us heating a space just for a couple of people, but moving those people into a certain area. This is called thermal zoning. So this can be done with our systems and saying, it's not just the analytics to improve the systems, but analytics to place the people into a more suitable area. 
Yeah, right. So, so understanding more aspects beyond just this place and this person, but but having a wider scope across uh, the the entire floor, the entire building, exactly. and understanding the differences and making changes not just within the the surrounding environment, but also physical location and other things, other variables that we have control. Exactly, over. and and you know, you, that's an, that's an easy problem, and because everyone has different requirements, and what they feel like and what they're happy with, and then just looking at is this space being utilized? How can I how can I Make sure that people use this space a little bit more or utilize this meeting room a little bit less. Make sure that the people are moving around and they're happy within the environment and that when they are sitting in a meeting room, they're not getting tired and losing concentration. So all this is the data that we can collect and, and if we get complaints in, in one meeting room too often, great. Maybe that is something wrong with the services there. Let's go conduct an air balance or check the lighting levels. And this is why data analytics is so important, correct? Because uh, there aren't many people in the world that could look at data from all these different systems, yeah, exactly. including personal feedback and qualitative feedback and actually start to make correlations between them. Exactly. It's just a, it's just a large amount of data. And if, if any one person is trying to look at all that at once, it becomes quite difficult to understand. And this just, again, directs people in the right area, allows them to make the decisions within a, in an efficient manner. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us here on Buildings of Tomorrow. Please feel free to comment, like, or share this episode and also ensure to subscribe to us here on this channel. We'll see you again soon.